Hey everyone, I wanted to go over a couple of things that one were in the comments and then number two, uh, some things regarding salvation. Um, so first of all, I want to say thank you all for all, all your comments and uh, you're always, always have amazing comments and um, I, you know, I could do a full time, <laughs> full-time videos just off of your comments because um, you guys are brilliant. But <clears throat> um, nonetheless, um, I, I don't, I can't do that. But um, I also wanted to let you know that I can't answer all the comments, but I always read them and I always appreciate them. And if I don't answer them, it's simply because I literally just only can answer about half let's put a respond to half i don't mean answer everything but respond at all so i just i always want to say if i don't respond never take it the wrong way because i know what it's like to take it the wrong way um <clears throat> sorry about the phone it's over there i can't really get it right now um okay so basically one thing i want to mention is that a lot of you mentioned after my last video about the dream that were you know that i heard april 7 in the dream a lot of you responded um you know that you've seen 717 or 117 for years or 17. um you know over the years this has come up a lot in fact, Genesis 7-11 is all about Noah's flood. 7-1-7 was the date a lot of people were looking at a few years ago, July 17th. Um, but the thing about it is that on 7-1-7, that's when the ark, Noah's ark, rested. And um, that 7-17... Okay, but also 117 is Nissan 17. <clears throat> and that is, um, you know, the day of resurrection, right? But it's the same as 717 because in the calendars, uh, you know, you have the civil calendar and the religious. You have the religious starts in Nissan. The civil calendar in Israel starts in September, October, the seventh month. So you're going to have a seven. Um, <clears throat> if it starts in the seventh month, then by the time, you know, April rolls over, you're back to one. So you have a one seventeen. And that's why it's the same as a seven seventeen. Um, I hope that makes sense. I know a lot of you already know that, but I, I hope I hope I explain that pretty decent. But but it's interesting because on Nissan 17, when Jesus rose from the dead, he reversed the curse, right? Because he paid for our sins, no longer under the the law of sin and death, and so by his blood sacrifice, right? And so um, when the, when the, uh, on 717, when Noah's ark rested on Mount Ararat, you know, Ararat also means reverse the curse. Okay. Not, not an accident, not an accident. All of these things are, you know, divinely orchestrated purposefully uh, by God. Um, and so we have this reversal of the curse uh, in Nisan, in the first month and the seventh, which is the same month when you take into consideration both calendars. Okay. Now, so 717 actually in the gematria means my father has gathered. What I meant to say is 
not my father has gathered, but it means to gather and to pluck. In the Hebrew, it's 717 ara. I don't know how you say it, but ara. To gather and to pluck. And yet, at the same time, we have the Greek meaning 717, Armageddon. Armageddon. Do you think they go together? I mean, come on. God's going to rapture to pluck and gather his people. And what's next? The the Armageddon. The Armageddon's after that. Okay, well, and I don't mean the next day, but you know what I mean. The tribulation starts and everything leads to Armageddon. So... Now, I have heard, I hear things, you know, from time to time that, that I believe a lot of people misunderstand it because of the <clears throat> subtle uh, challenges with definitions of words and things. And so... I hear people talk about faith and salvation the wrong way. Like having faith that you're saved has to do with you being faithful and being obedient or working at your salvation, uh, this type of thing. So I want to remind you or tell you that if you take the scripture or say Ephesians 2, 8, 9, we're saved by faith. You're saved by grace through faith, not of yourself, lest any man should boast. It's a gift of God. Now, the word faith in that text, if you go to the Greek, there's the word that's used is called pistis. I think that's how you say it. P-I-S-T-I-S. And I think it's 4102. So here we have Pistis 4102. And down here it reads, uh, persuade, be persuaded, persuasion, come to trust, faith. Faith is always a gift of God and never something that can be produced by people. In other words, there's no human effort. In short, 4102, Pistis, faith, for lever is God's divine persuasion and therefore distinct from human belief, confidence, yet involving it. The Lord continuously births faith in the yielded believer so they can know what he prefers, the persuasion of his will. So it says it's always a gift from God and never something that can be produced by your own effort. God's divine persuasion. So this is not related to your ability to be faithful to God, although we want to be faithful to God. But it clearly is a word that is implying it's a divine gift. It's a divine persuasion, not from a man's efforts. It means divinely inspired gift of faith, divinely inspired faith that cannot be mustered up by man's effort. It literally is defined as something that cannot be, cannot be attained through uh, uh, human effort, but it is literally a divine spirit of faith that is given to the person who chooses to believe in Christ. And so for that reason, um, you have to realize that it's nothing that you can do. It's completely from God. If you choose to believe the gospel, <clears throat> God gives you that faith. And if you say, like, for example, there's another one, uh, we walk by faith and not by sight. Well, it's the same word, pistis. It's the same word in the Greek. 
And I've heard people try to say, it's you being faithful to God <clears throat> that qualifies you. No, it's not because that word is a gift of the spirit of faith and cannot be obtained. <clears throat> it cannot be obtained by your obedience. Okay. It cannot be obtained by obedience. And so you've got to realize that salvation is literally a God given um, spirit of faith that you can't even lose if you were given it to it by God. You know, in your worst days where you might doubt everything, that spirit lives in you. In fact, when the Holy Spirit dwells in you, the Bible says you're sealed by the Holy Spirit until the day of redemption. That means the Holy Spirit is sealed in you. <clears throat> now, I have seen a lot of, over the years, I've seen a lot of arguments, um, uh, you know, regarding the, uh, the, the bridesmaids, the, you know, the midnight, Matthew 25, the midnight hour when um, the, the, the virgins are there and uh, the bridegroom is a call at midnight. And then um, when he comes, five of the 10 had run out of oil and they went to buy, to get more oil because the ones that had oil said, we can't give you our oil. You have, you have to go get it when they had asked for it. And then the bridegroom came and took them in while the other five were going to buy oil. Well, I've heard so many different, uh, I've heard so many different interpretations of this and you know, it, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of good questions. Um, but I realized something today that I really had never really quite grasped before that I don't even think I've heard anyone say it before. And I think this could help explain the whole thing about, you know, who are these people that, who are these people that Jesus says, he, shut the, he shuts the door and, the, you know, and they knock on the door and he's like, I don't, I don't know you go. I have to, you know, I'm shutting the door. I don't know you. So, you know, so you can't help but think, well, wow. You know, would Jesus say this to, a, to, a, you know, to someone that he, I mean, why would he say that to someone who's waiting for him? You know, I mean, think about it. that doesn't make sense, right? Why would they be waiting for him if, if they don't know him or love him? Or who are these people, you know, and why aren't they invited into the wedding? Are they Christians? Are they, you know, um, you know, uh, so anyway, this is because I've had these same thoughts. Um, now, one thing I, I saw a few years ago is that Bridesmaid is not the, the original translation. Virgin is better. A bridesmaid implies that they are already in the wedding. They're not. They're virgins. They're not bridesmaids. They never were. Virgin does not mean someone who's getting married in a wedding. Virgin is actually someone who's not, you know, involved with men. Okay. All right. So, um, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. The Bible says they ran out of oil. So the thing is, is if you are truly born again, full of the Holy Spirit, which is the oil, you don't run out of oil because the Holy Spirit doesn't come and go. You can grieve the Holy Spirit by sinning, but the Holy Spirit doesn't leave you. Okay, the word of God says, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. It says that in Hebrews. It says that in the Old Testament, I will never leave you and I will never forsake you. That is a promise uh, to the person who is 
born of the spirit. Okay, so, you know, nothing shall separate us from the love of God, right? In Christ Jesus, nothing shall separate us. Okay, so when you have that oil, you have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit doesn't, you don't run out of the Holy Spirit. You never run out of the Holy Spirit. You are full of the Holy Spirit. Like I said, you could grieve the Holy Spirit, but you don't, you don't make the Holy Spirit leave. Okay, now these five virgins who ran out of oil, how do you run out of oil if you don't have any oil? How do they have any oil if you can't run out of oil? This is it. You know how you can go to church before you're saved, before you have you know, there's a lot of people who visit church, a lot of people who go to church, but they never actually receive Christ truly as their savior. They're never baptized in the Holy Spirit. But they can they can have some oil by being in the presence of the anointing. You know, like if you've ever if you're full of the Holy Spirit and you pray for someone uh, who's not saved, They'll say, because I've had it happen, they'll say, oh, yeah, I felt something, but they're not saved yet. But they could feel, they could partake of the blessing of the anointing without being saved. You could sit in a church and partake of the blessing of the anointing of the Holy Spirit without ever getting saved. Now you could be one of the five virgins. You ran out of oil because you only borrowed it to begin with because you were just taking it, soaking it up from someone else who was releasing it. Like being in the atmosphere of a Holy Spirit filled church, for example. These are the ones, so why, so that's why the Lord said, I didn't, I don't know you. I don't even know you because they never were baptized with the Holy Spirit and sealed with the Holy Spirit. They never were. Okay. So these people uh, could be, I get, you know, they're, they're deceived enough to think that they can work their way in to the things of God. You can't work your way in to anything. You can only believe in him who died for your sins. And then that pistis faith will come into your being and you will be walking by the spirit of faith, right? And not by sight. Second Corinthians 5, 7, walk by faith and not by sight. It doesn't mean we walk by our, our being faithful to God. No, because like I said, that faith, pistis, 4102, Greek, comes from God only. It comes from the divine spirit of God. And so um, you know, Jesus said, the work that I do is to believe. The work of God is to believe. Okay, that's what I meant. The work of God is to believe. I put that actually in my um, I posted that in the community page. A few days ago so basically um so there we have it um faith walking by faith is truly a spirit-led life to walk by faith and that to believe god can be quite the work to do because when you believe in god you're believing god against all the circumstances that the enemy wants to throw at you wants to tell you, wants to lie to you, and you have to fight the lies and say, no, by faith, I believe the word of God. I, I refuse to believe and act upon the lies that the enemy is trying to tell me. But I'm gonna walk by the faith in what God and his word are telling me and what the Holy Spirit is leading me to do. So um, the lighting's changing because it's the sun's going down here, but, um, I wanted to give you that and um, 
you know, I, I hope that it helps some of you understand that this, this walk of faith, <laughs> it's not easy. You know, God, you know, God's got you, but it's not, I mean, you're in a war. It's not easy, but, but God has you. If you're his and you've been filled with the Holy Spirit and sealed with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit's not going to leave you. Even when you're filled with doubt and fear, the Holy Spirit is faithful. God is faithful. That's God's Holy Spirit. God is faithful. The Lord is faithful. And he will complete the work he started in you. And he will complete and fulfill his word. And his word is that he's coming to get those that are his and take them to his father's house, to a place that he's prepared for us for such a time as this, when the world is about to enter into tribulation and that's not meant for the believers in Christ. It's a time of punishment for the world. That's why we're not supposed to be here because it's not for us. It's for those who reject the Messiah. And God willing, many will get saved after the rapture too. But right now, all this stuff that's about to go down and already, you can already see it starting is, is for those who have rejected the, the incredible, beautiful, spectacular, awesome, glorious gift from God when he sent his only begotten son into the world that whomsoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting eternal life. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So rest in, rest in the Lord and, you know, draw close to him so you can really hear what he's telling you, because this is with what God's after. He's after this relationship where you can hear his voice and you can tell him, Talk to him and you can do what he tells you to do. This is what he's after. This is beyond sin, no sin, sin, no sin. Is that a sin? Is this a sin? Am I sinning? Can I sin? Can I still sin? What he's after is what happens beyond sin where, where the spirit is alive. And that's what he's after. He wants you to walk with him. Just like Adam before the fall, they walked together. He wants to walk with you. And so um, for that reason, uh, we need to realize that the best thing we can do is clear our spirit out so that we can really hear from God. Because when you are, when you are in sin, doing stuff that you shouldn't be doing, your atmosphere will become dark. Okay. And the Holy Spirit don't like the dark. Holy Spirit, don't like the dark. God is light and we need to walk in the light. And that's where you're going to feel your peace and your joy in the Holy Spirit. So anyway, thank you guys for listening. Love you all. And I will, hopefully we can leave. Yep. Real soon. Okay. Real soon. I'm hoping for Passover. Okay. God bless.